Welcome to the Pro Cycling UK preview of the 2024 Women's Tour Down Under. We'll start with a brief history of the Women's Tour Down Under, which returned in January 2023 with a great addition. Grace Brown took the victory after a close battle with Amanda Spratt, which saw just 10 seconds separate the pair of Australians. Georgia Williams rounded out the podium as the only other rider within 20 seconds of Brown. The opening stage of the 2023 Women's World Tour saw Daria Pikulik take her first World Tour win in an out-and-out -out sprint. A couple of late curves made it hard for some favourites to get into position, but Pikulik managed to negotiate it and have the fastest kick. Alex Manley was able to take the win on stage two and was led out perfectly into a final 90-degree corner, which made the final sprint comfortable for the Aussie. The GC was decided on the final day with the corkscrew climb in the final kilometres deciding the race. A head-to-head -head sprint for the stage win saw Spratt leading out Brown, who was able to come back for the win and GC. Despite not winning last year, Amanda Spratt is synonymous with the women's tour down under. She's been on the podium in each of the last five editions, with three of them wins, in a run stretching back to 2016. The 2024 Women's Tour Down Under route finally sees the Women's World Tour use Willunga Hill for a summit finish. It's the climb most known from the men's edition, but hasn't been used in the women's race until now. During Covid, the Festival of Cycling, a sort of domestic tour down under did go up Willunga Hill however. So we have an idea of who might be a threat this year. Back then, it was Sarah G. Ganti who outpaced Lucy Kennedy to the win. Women's Tour Down Under 2024 Contenders FDJ Suez come here to mean business. They've got last year's winner in Grace Brown along with Cecile Uttrup Ludwig as big pre-race favourites. New signing Nina Beisman was also third here last year on the harder sprint stage. Either her or Gladys Verhulst will get the nod on stage one this year, and then might still be in the hunt on what is a tougher second day in 2024. It's obviously a home race for Grace Brown and she will want to do well, but Cecile Uttrup Ludwig feels more suited for the blast up Willunga Hill for mine. Osses are notoriously strong at this point of the season though, especially if they've been hunting national championships, which are after the date of this preview but before the tour down under. They'll play it by ear and see how Brown is faring against Spratt on the climbs. For Little Trek, the equation is simple. The women's tour down under is very much an Amanda Spratt race. She's going to have some great support from the likes of Chapman and Hansen to keep things under control. The course changes feel like the race has moved back to a parkour where Spratt will have more of an advantage over most of the other rivals. The sprinting on stage one should be done by Ilaria Sanguinetti, although there was just a hint that Eleanor Backstead was starting to get more opportunities last year too. Spratt threw the kitchen sink at the race last year, and it wasn't through want of trying that she didn't take the win. The climbing GC threat from Livalula Jaco should come from their new rider Ella Wiley. She's making the step up from Life Plus Wahoo after impressing last season. The 21-year-old Kiwi finished in the top 10 of the GC here last season, before going on to finish on the podium at Navarre Elite Classics, winning the youth jersey at the World Tour race at Sulia Women and finishing 11th on the Tourmalet in the Tour de France fam. She's got a solid lineup behind her that includes a stage winner from last year's race in Alex Manley and the all-round threat of Ruby Roseman Gannon. I'm assuming Manley will get the stage 1 sprint and maybe Roseman Gannon the lead on stage 2. That leaves Wiley to do her best for GC on Wollonga Hill on stage 3. Human-powered health has made a number of signings in the off-season and will look to get off to a better start in the new two-year women's world tour cycle than the last one. Krista Doble Hickok usually does well in Australia, finishing fifth in last year's edition of the Women's Tour Down Under but also finished fourth in GC back in 2019. She's another rider for whom the inclusion of Willunga Hill will help her chances. Harrietta Christie also had a good race here last season, finishing seventh in GC and taking home the youth jersey. She will either be supporting or complementing Doble Hickok here, with the strongest of the pair going to be made clear on the road. We're also going to get to see the return to the peloton of Ruth Edwards, who was Ruth Winder the last time she raced a World Tour race. She won the 2020 edition of the Tour Down Under shortly before the lockdown started. She had a career year in 2021 and retired at the top of her game to get a better life balance. 
that retirement has turned into a sabbatical with Edwards keeping her eye in by racing gravel in the meantime, but is now back on the road. Her level will be interesting to see. Chloe Digert is going to race the tour down under for the first time since 2017. She was just 20 years old back then but took three top 10 stage finishes at the time. She's here in Australia with no doubt one eye on the track cycling Nations Cup, that will be taking place in Adelaide a couple of weeks afterwards. I'm going to be intrigued to see how she does on Willunga Hill here, but there is no reason why she shouldn't be in the mix on the opening two stages. If Digert isn't getting involved in the fast finishes, then her teammate Soraya Paladin should be one to keep an eye on, particularly on stage two. She's not a sprinter, but she does have a fast finish after a tough race, something we usually see at, say, Trofeo Alfredo Binder. We might also see a GC push from Neve Bradbury as a home hope. Her climb to fifth on Horticum in the infamous CIC Pyrenees Tour last year shows she can go with the best on her day. UAE Team ADQ are bringing their new sprinter, the Polish rider Dominika Wlodeksik here to Australia. She took six wins last season and will be keen to show that she belongs at world tour level. She should get the nod on stage one at least, and have a chance to replicate what her compatriot Daria Pikulik did on the opening stage last year. Sofia Bertizolo is possibly a better shout for stage two. She's similar to Paladin in that she will have a fast finish from a reduced group after a tough race. Out of the team's options, it feels like Michaela Harvey might be the best shot for GC contention. She can sometimes go quiet but now and again will pull out a strong result like at the UAE Tour last season. She can certainly be in the mix on Willunga Hill for sure. AG Insurance Sudal pulled off something of a coup recently by announcing the signing of Ossie Serra Giganti a year before the end of her contract with Movie Star. It allows Giganti to race the tour down under for the first time since 2020. She won the following year's Festival of Cycling, which finished on the summit of Willunga Hill, but since then has often been injured and not able to show her best. Her return to racing on a new team on home soil will be keenly watched. Teammate Justin Gakir will also be one to watch as she can be a GC threat on a course with shorter climbs. Her win at Setmana Ciclista Valenciana last year was a notable breakthrough. She sometimes goes under the radar, usually supporting big-name teammate Ashley Mulman Pascio, but is more than capable of a strong result. The team will also back Ali Wollaston on the sprint stages. She's got enough climbing legs to be a contender on both stages 1 and 2, which might see her able to use bonus seconds to sneak into the leader's jersey as one of the few able to double up both days. Her 2023 GC and stage win at the festival Elsie Jacobs showed what she can do on mixed terrain. San Michel's Mavic Ober 93 will look at their young hope Marion Bunel for a GC push. Only 19 years old, she had a strong tour de l'Avenir Femme, finishing 8th in GC against a host of bigger world tour level names, along with 7th in La Perigord Ladies as well. She certainly made people take notice of those results and might shine on Willunga Hill. The team also gets Roxanne Fournier back in action for the first time, since having iliac artery surgery in the middle of the 2023 season. She had been looking strong with a host of top 10 results across the season up until that point, but actually, they were masking that there was an issue. Hopefully, back to full fitness, Fournier could be a threat in the sprints here. There's also Victoire Gilman who left FDJ Suez this off-season, despite finally winning the first UCI race of her long career. She will be one to keep an eye on across all three stages. Two new recruits for Life Plus Wa who are going to be worth keeping an eye on at this year's Women's Tour Down Under. The experienced American Heidi Franz joins the team after an up-and-down 2023 season. She was embroiled in the Zaf saga early on, but later in the year came back to win her first UCI race in Europe. The British team also signed the young Czech rider Christina Belova from Lotto Destiny Ladies. She impressed in 2023 as well, taking a good handful of top 10 results across the season. She should get the nod on stage one and might be able to come to wider attention with a good result. Finally, this Melissa bike will have their new signing Lee Kun Noyan as a possible contender in the sprint on stage one. She took the first victories of her career last season, the first coming with a really long sprint that no other rider was able to match. A similar early launch might see her do well here too with none of the truly big-name sprinters like Cole, 
VBEZ and Balsamo Racing in Australia. Top 3 Prediction First, Amanda Spratt. Second, Grace Brown. Third, Krista Doble Hickok. Thanks for listening to this race preview for the 2024 Women's Tour Down Under. Don't forget to like and subscribe to be the first to hear more women cycling previews this season.